What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. This is a quick overview of the Atlantic Ocean right here. Today, basically, what we're going to be talking about is... Starting this week and starting into next week, we need to really start paying attention into the tropics because I've been looking at the European runs, I've been looking at some of the models, I've been reaching out to my tropical team on Storms United, and we're starting to see an increased chance of potential tropical development this week and next week, ladies and gentlemen. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We're going to go ahead and first show you a few runs that we have right here. We're going to show you the CMC, the Icon, and the European run. They have doubled down on their potential development scenario. Yesterday, we reported here on Pat's Path Predictor that we, several models were calling for tropical development starting in about a week or so. Well, these models are not stopping anytime soon. They've actually doubled down and they have this tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa in four to five days or so, and then starts to meander in the main development region, and it starts to organize and potentially develop right here. It's going to take some time to develop before it, do, uh, before it does. It's most likely, according to these runs, not going to develop until it gets closer to the Antilles over there. That's the CMC run we have. We're going to go ahead and show you ne next the Icon run right here. The Icon run has this wave coming off the coast of Africa in about f about four to five days or so, and then it moves into the main development region, starts to organize and potentially develop. It The Icon, for some reason, has this kind of moving pretty slow across the main development region. The CMC, for example, is over here. The Icon uh, model is calling for it right here. So there is still a lot of uncertainty to this, so please do keep that in mind. And even the European is doubling down on this. We'll go ahead and show you the Zero Z European to kind of show you that. This European run has showing a low pressure system coming off the coast of Africa in four to five days, starts to organize as once it gets to the Atlantic, starts organizing, potentially developing, potentially strength, uh, strengthening down the road. So this is what we have going on right here. This is about nine to ten days out by the time it gets to the, this point. And this thing isn't even off the coast of Africa yet, so please do keep that in mind. However, we are starting to sh see signs of potential and in, potential increase in activity as we go into the dog days of hurricane season right here. So just to put that in perspective, we're going to go ahead and show you this chart right here. What this chart is, this is basically the tropical storm probabilities we have, and this is the extended range forecast according to the European. This week we have a third 20 to 30 percent chance over the Bahamas but as we get to the second week of August as you can see boom massive chances across the uh, the main development region right here as you can see we have some areas of 50 percent uh, over 50 percent chance of development this is not really that much of a change of yesterday in fact that 50 percent area was actually a bit small of uh, smaller yesterday and it was only in one spot now it's in three spots and the chances across the Atlantic have continued to increase. The 40 to 50 has spread out considerably. Same with the 30 to 40. So this is something I'm continuing to pay attention to right here, and we're going to monitor it as we go into next week. So we're going to go ahead and show you what's working for and against it. Here's what's easily working for it. We have a huge amount of w very warm water across the main development region, across the Atlantic, across, like, for example, parts of the main development region off the coast of South America. We're seeing water temperatures of 30 plus degrees Celsius or 86 plus degree Fahrenheit. And the 30 plus degree Celsius extends from the Gulf of Mexico all the way to Haiti and even further out east in the Atlantic Ocean right here. So this is definitely something we need to monitor. Also, the main development region is over 82 uh, two degrees Fahrenheit or 28 degrees Celsius across the whole area, which is something we absolutely do not need to see. So this is something we're going to continue to monitor as at this point, it's no longer ahead of schedule compared to other years we've had. It's basically playing house money. And it, basically what we're looking at is, the question we're have, we have rather is how high can this go? So that's the thing we have going on right here. So next thing we're going to go ahead and show you is the ocean heat content map we have right here. The OHC across much of the Atlantic has is far more expansive than it was in 2020 right here. And in the Caribbean, it is a lot more than it was three years ago. We have a huge area of 175 plus OHC. I wouldn't even be surprised if we see 200 OHC in some of these spots over there. 
So this is definitely something to pay attention to as we go into next week and potentially into September right here as this these OHC values are not dropping anytime soon. And the more ocean heat content you have, the more fuel these hurricanes have for development. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear map we have pulled up right here. The wind shear continues to fluctuate across parts of the Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean Sea. The Gulf has very little shear as of right now. Same with the Caribbean Sea. There is an area of 30 plus knots right here. However, it's not particularly large, and the Western Caribbean has been decreasing in shear considerably. So this is definitely something to continue to monitor as we go down the road, and as we go ahead and show you the shear forecast by the European model right here, this kind of emphasizes this. So here's what we have going on right here according to the European. Here's the shear forecast going into this. We're going to go ahead and start 24 hours out. As you can see, there's a continued fluctuation, especially in the main development region, especially in parts of the Caribbean, uh, Gulf of Mexico, parts of the Atlantic. It's going up, down, up, down, up, down, and it's going to continue that for the next 72 hours right here. And as you can see, we do see an increased amount of wind shear. There's a trough and a ridge that moves through parts of the western main development region over here. And basically the ridge that moves through Cuba right here. Now we're going to go ahead, kind of cross-check this with the moisture component. And this is where things get interesting right here. As you can see, this is three days out. Parts of the main development region get a lot more moist than they were a couple of weeks ago. Parts of the Caribbean get more moist. The Gulf of Mexico is still full of dry air, but that is expected to change in the next two weeks or so. So act, hurricane season is starting to get more active. We're starting to see some more uh, scenarios ramping up, especially in the ensemble runs, and we'll get to those in just a little bit. Now we're going to go ahead and show you what we have going on starting about five days out because that's when that tropical wave moves off the coast of Africa. Five days out, the shear in the, mostly in the main development region clears out except for the parts of the eastern main MDR over here. The eastern Caribbean does see a bit of a resurgence of the shear, but you are going to see these fluctuations pretty much through the rest of hurricane season. That's pretty typical. Right here. Now we're going to go ahead and go eight days out. You start to see more of a resurgence of wind shear, especially in the southern main development region and in a little bit of the Atlantic. But by and large, the Atlantic Ocean does clear out of a lot of shear right here. We're going to cross check this with the moisture component over here. As you can see, the MDR is getting a bit more moist. We do have a little bit of Sahara dust starting to move into the Atlantic Ocean. However, a lot of the Sahara dust is going to start getting pushed up to Europe. We're starting to see that process this, this week. And especially across parts of the Western Atlantic over here, things are starting to get a bit more moist. So this is something we need to continue to keep a close eye on. That's that low pressure system that I was talking to you about. So definitely something to monitor going forward. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some ensemble runs. We're going to go ahead and show you the European ensemble runs. And the European ensembles have continued to double down on this tropical wave developing, starting in the main development region. And then as it gets closer to the Antilles, things start to really ramp up in intensity. And as you can see, already this is about, this is what, 270 hours out. We're seeing a lot of scenarios of tropical development from the Europeans. So the ensemble runs are quite confident that something is going to happen. However, this is still over 10 days out. So definitely something to take it with a grain of salt right here. But even going 15 days out, we see a massive amount of, uh, of interest right here. We see a massive amount of ensembles calling for tropical storm or hurricane strength right here. So this is something we need to pay attention to, but keep this in mind. This is two weeks out. It's highly unreliable, so we're going to have to continue to monitor it. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the GFS ensemble. We start to see these scenarios of that tropical wave the Europeans picking up on, and the GFS isn't being as aggressive as the European is, which is pretty interesting right here. And I'm actually quite surprised about this because usually the GFS is pretty gung-ho and all that. Now we'll show you the GPS ensembles, kind of see what's going on. They're showing a similar scenario with what the European is calling for, although they have a lot less scenarios of potential development going on compared to the European, the CMC, the Icon ensembles going into this. So this is something we're going to have to continue to monitor. Keep an eye on your local forecasts, your local weather observations, and continue to monitor those as well. We're going to go ahead and close the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.